Hello and welcome to Love Anything Art. Today I will show you three different patterns and three different ideas for using those patterns. Hello. This is the very first idea and all three ideas will be built off of this idea. So these are the colors I will be using throughout the entire project. We have this lilac purple color. This silver gray color. And the name is worn off, but this is Turnip. It's a pretty beautiful purple color. And then this is just a little bit left of this other color. They're both the same color and it is the Dusty Rose. First I'll start with the Dusty Rose. I'll use the little bit left from the small one and then just a little bit of the whole piece. I'll just take it, work it between my fingers, and then roll it into a thin snake shape. And while I'm doing that, I just want to welcome everybody to my channel. I am so glad you are here. I hope that you are a returning subscriber, and if not, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate it, and I make videos every Tuesday. Once you have it to the thickness you want, just cut it into three even length pieces. And then with the two purple colors and the gray color, you'll just cut off a chunk of each of those. Roll them out. You'll want to make sure when rolling up that your outside color is as thick as the pink color. I'll show you here in a second. Just place it on one of your colors, cut it to the size of the pink sausage roll in the middle, and then roll it up. And you'll see that it's roughly the same thickness from side to side as the pink inner roll. Just give it a nice gentle roll. Join all the pieces together. And then you'll want to do the same with your other colors. And you'll notice that I just rolled it just enough to get the pieces joined and not to elongate. All right, I have my three colors and I'm ready to start rolling it out a bit thinner. And this is about as thin as mine will be. And I'll just chop off the messy ends on both sides. Keep those scraps. They make beautiful projects. And then just do the same with your other two tubes of clay. And once you have them rolled out to the same length, just start cutting them into even length pieces. I would say this is probably just about an inch. Ah, quite beautiful, those colors. I love it. With each of your little sausage rolls, just take it and roll one end so that it comes to a point and you'll leave the other end thick. And then just start rolling it up into a snail shell kind of a little look here. Easy peasy. You'll just want to do that with each of your pieces. 
pop in your favorite podcast, listen to it, get lost in the clay making, and I'll see you in a few seconds. All right, I have all of mine into my little snail shell little shapes. Mix them up a little bit. Make sure I don't have whole clumps of one color, hopefully in one spot. Mix it, mix it, mix it. And then you'll just want to start forming it into a tube shape. Took a few minutes to do that. I'll just keep working it. All right, I have mine into my little cylinder tube shape. Then you'll want to put that in the freezer for a few seconds so it's easier to slice up. And the reveal! Ta-da! It's kind of fun. Pretty simple pattern. You never know what you're going to come up with. I really liked how that looks. Just go ahead and slice it into even length pieces. All right, I have them all sliced up. I'm going to lay them out flat. All the pieces touching and join them together. What's wonderful about this is you can manipulate it and it won't look any different. It'll look intentional. So you just put them on there, set them side by side, however you want them to be lined up. And I would recommend putting it on a piece of paper so that you can do your burnishing. Just sandwich your clay between two pieces of paper and then just use some pretty good force with your fingers, just the tips, to start evening everything out, joining it together. You can also use a roller too. I'm going to cut out my shape. You can use a template if you want to do that first, if you're scared of cutting into your clay. But I am going to make my piece bigger than I intend it to be. That way, if I make a mistake, I can cut more off and it won't harm my design. So I'm just kind of placing in my little poke marks so I can line up to make sure that I go pretty straight across from one side to the other. And it's just a little mark in there, so I can always use my finger and rub out that mark if I need to. Basically, it's like a, a big smiley face, like a big clown smiley face that I'm cutting out. And of course, save those scraps. And actually kind of look pretty cool if you left it down there at the bottom and kind of rippled it or gave it little ridges. That would be kind of pretty too. All right, I'm using two different circle cutters. I'm using a medium sized one and then a smaller one. I'm gonna use just the medium sized one right there in the very middle. And then I'm going to flank it on both sides with the smaller circle cutter. And right now I'm just putting in the impression or the indent of where I want it to be and then I just finished cutting them out. I'm putting mine on the corner of like a baking loaf pan. This will help give it the pop out kind of a design, kind of making it more of um, like a curved shape. I'm just setting it on there, 
just lining it up how I want it to be. And then you can also use your fingers and smooth out any of the rough rims or edges. You can also sand when you are done baking. And I'm going to use the little dots that I cut out. I'm just smoothing them out with my finger. Before baking, I am going to just trace out with my X-Acto knife just the dark purple areas. Just kind of cutting out the rim or the edge all the way around. I will be putting paint on this once I have baked it. It actually comes out really cool looking. So you can outline everything if you want, but I'm just choosing to do the purple areas. You'll see there I just barely made a little cut into the surface of the clay. I did not do that to the little circles that I cut out though. All right, you wanna put that in the oven and bake it. Okay, I put it in the oven, baked it, taken it out, and I've smoothed out the edges of everything so it's nice and smooth. Now you can take black paint or whatever color you want and then just fill in those cracks, the lines for the outlines around the purple clay. Once that's dry, you'll want to use a damp soapy cloth and wipe away all of the excess paint. Also, I went ahead and rounded out the edges. They were more of at a point before. I think this makes it look a whole lot better. So just rounded those out with some sandpaper. I'm going to drill a hole into each end of my necklace. And then I will begin assembling. Before I do that though, I am going to resin all of my clay pieces. All right, so they are all nice and super shiny. Love it. I'm gonna use some of this metal wire and I'm going to decorate the back of my necklace. First, I'm going to drill a hole into one side of my necklace. Then I'm going to take my wire and place it in that hole. I'm going to get just a little dot of super glue using a metal stick pin to get that out of my super glue tube. I'm going to place that right there where the metal goes into the clay. And then I'm going to line it up directly across from that, going over the large circle there. I'm going to drill my hole. I'm going to cut my metal wire. You always want to cut off a little bit more than you think you're going to need. That way, you make sure you have plenty of slack for it. And again, just put a little dot of super glue. And then you can just dab away any of that excess. And then you can just continue. You can put as many wires as you want on the back, just Xing it, going through, however you really want to make your webbed pattern design back there. And then I'm going to start drilling holes into all of my circles that I had cut out so that I can connect all of my pieces together so I can string it. 
be sure to super glue in all of your eye hooks that you use. And then I'm just going to continue stringing and putting my necklace together. Ta-da! And it's done. I really like the way this came out. I hope you enjoyed this too. I have two more ideas and pattern ideas for you. Super simple and fun things to do. So please stay tuned for those second two. Idea number two. Again, I have made my tubes of clay. This time they are slightly thicker than the previous ones. I will cut these down into even length sections. And with those, I'm going to again roll down one side, making it pretty thin. These ones will come to more of a long, thin point on the end. Do that with each of your sections. All right, I have them all ready to go, lined up in a pattern. No two colors are beside each other. I'm using some rolled out thin black clay. Place this on the side of your clay that's face up. And then just flip that over. Cut away all of the excess black clay Then starting at the thinnest side, you're going to want to roll it up. Roll it up backwards so that you're rolling the colors up and over the black clay. Just being careful to make sure you work out any air bubbles. I have it all rolled up. I'm just going to tuck the end tube pieces in there. Just do that on both sides. And then start gently rolling it out. This is mine. I'm going to bend it in half and cut it. So I have two even length pieces here. And then cut those all down into even length pieces. And then start placing them together just into a circular shape. A 
Once you've used all your pieces or gotten it into a round shape, just gently start pressing everything together. And I'm going to make my little tube here a bit thinner. Scaled it down a little bit. I'll just go ahead and cut that in half and let you see it's really pretty inside. They look like a bunch of little roses. It's so pretty. I love it. I'll slice those into even length sections. And just like the first one, I'll place them all together, just connecting them into a jigsaw looking piece here. Just using up all my pieces and getting them all connected. And again, you'll want to give it a light burnish with your fingers. Join everything together, smooth it out, get rid of those cracks, crevices, dents, stings. Make it smooth and beautiful. I have hastily made a small little template. Kind of looks like a flower blob, but just a random shape. I'm going to cut that out. And use my fingers to smooth out those edges. Flip it over and do the same to the other side. I'm going to use the outside of a bowl cup that I have just to give it a rounded, cupped, curved kind of a surface. Just work it on there, make sure all of these sides are pushed down and touching the ceramic cup. I have a teardrop cutter. I'm going to make a cut, one on each side. Just make it as even as possible. Just kind of eyeballing it here, I'm trying to make it as perfect as possible. Cut out your shape. You can just remove your little teardrop there. Using my finger just to smooth it out. And do the same to the other side. With the scraps that I have, I'm just going to slice them into little sections. And start placing them together just randomly. Just building it up until I have a tube shape, a long thin tube shape. And then just start gently working it and rolling it out into a nice smooth finish. And then on one of the ends, just Start rolling it down into a point.
You can place that on a piece of paper and bake that. All right, I've baked my pieces, sanded them, and put some resin on there. Really like the way this turned out. I actually tried it out. It works pretty well. I did have to put my hair up in a ponytail bun first and then put this through it. So it kind of gave my hair a nice pretty decoration. Looked really cool. Really like the colors, the pattern. Looks like little roses all over it. Kind of Beauty and the Beast-ish. What you think? Please stick around. I have one more idea for you. Idea number three. Again, I have rolled out my tubes of clay. These are shorter and stubbier little pieces. With each of those, I am going to cut it directly down the middle. So I have two halves. I'll do that with each of my colors. I will separate those out so I have two stacks of each of the colors. And then you'll want to mix and match them so that no two halves have the same colors. So you'll put a purple to a purple, light purple to dark purple, and so on and so forth. And then just kind of line them up. The center part won't measure or line up completely perfectly, but that's okay. It won't be noticed, and it really looks good in the end. Once you have them joined, just give them a nice gentle roll. You can cut off the messy ends. And there you go. Looks pretty cool. And then just roll them out a little bit thinner. Cut those into pieces. With each of those, I'm going to roll one end out into that spike kind of a look again. They kind of look like those little golf tees. Again, I'm going to roll out some really thin black clay. You want to take each of your little pick thingies here and place them on the black clay. Cut out all around it. Carefully pick it up. It does not have to be completely perfect. It will not matter in the end. Give it a gentle roll. That's just to join the black clay to your beautiful colored clay. And then start rolling it up like we did before into those snail shell little shapes. Rolling the colored clay up and over around the black clay. Ah, it looks beautiful. Continue that with all of your others. Then just lay three pieces together so that they are nice and sandwiched, flush against each other. And then just start stacking all the way up. So you'll have three rows or three stacks that will be coming up towards the top like a tower. Okay. 
And now you have your little tower. Just start pressing very gently everything together. Kind of getting it all grooved together here. Your stack of swirls. Once you have it joined, go ahead and cut it in half here to see what we're working with. Oh, it's so pretty. I really like it. Again, they kind of look like roses. A little bit more defined here with all those black swirls in there. Slice those into even length pieces. Then just start placing them together and making a slab out of them like the other two we did. And I'm going to use a circle cutter and just cut out a circle. Find where you think it looks best. And then I made this triangle kind of a shape with paper and I will cut that shape out also. Plenty leftovers for you to make some other cool things. Go ahead and smooth out those edges. And I have this tiny circle cutter. I'm going to make a circle cut out, two of them on the large circle. And then I will put two on one end of the triangle on the flat end, and then one at the end where it comes to a point. Place those on a piece of paper, making sure everything is smooth, and go ahead and bake those. All right, they have been baked. You can resin yours if you want. I'll be using some of this metal wire. I'll just string it through my pieces. I went ahead and made three beads out of this patterned clay also. I'll place one in the middle between my two shapes. And then I will place a bead on both sides of my shapes. And then just finish assembling. Add on your claw and your little latch, jump rings. And I am done. Y'all, it took me like four days to make this video. <laughs> I hope you like it. <laughs> this is the third and final one. My favorite is number two. Let me know which one is your favorite. And as always, I appreciate your support and view. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.